What's up, what's up, man? We thank you for clicking on the link and checking out the breakdown of First John chapter 2, verses 12 through 14. Again, this is a breakdown of the passage of First John chapter 2, verses 12 through 14. And again, I want to establish the human writer, and because I believe God is the author and, and finisher of our faith, right? All scripture is inspired and breathed out of God, right? So, John is the human writer who is pinning these words here. And, and we're talking about the disciple John, the original 12, right? The original apostle John, who wrote uh, the gospel of John, who uh, wrote the book of Revelation, and, and these books, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. But uh, he he's someone that, that walked with Jesus, talked with Jesus, ate with Jesus, did everything with, with Christ himself. So this is a first account, an eyewitness account. So let us uh, read. This is all about spiritual growth. And if you don't know, this uh, breakdown goes to a story, a testimony of a, a man of God named Jacob. So if you click in this description, you can go to that video of Soldiers After Dark, which airs every Saturday at 8 p.m., so don't miss it, man. Support and subscribe. Uh, but let us go to the word. Verse 12, John writes these, I am writing to you, dear children, because your sins have been forgiven on account of his name. So what is he trying to explain here? Who is he writing to? He's writing to dear children. And who are these dear children? Remember, this is about spiritual growth. So these are like the babies in the faith, right? People who first come to faith in Jesus, right? On account of his name, of his virtue, his character. And so John is writing to to people who first believe in, in Jesus as the Messiah. People who've been born again, right? Verse 13. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. So take notice of the, the, the order that he's writing right here. He says, I am writing to you, fathers, people that are uh, grown up in the faith, people that are mature, right? People, uh making disciples, uh, helping each other out, uh, discipling one another, and building each other up, right? He says, I'm writing to you fathers who know him who is from the beginning. Who let, Let's sit and, and chew on that a little bit. He's writing to the mature believers, mature disciples in the faith who know him from the beginning, the eternal God. Right? The Word. Jesus Christ. Who was from the beginning. Who is the Word. Right? Was God. Is God. And from the beginning, man. The Word became flesh. So he's writing to, to new believers. He's writing to mature believers. And then he says this. In the second part of verse 13. I am writing to you young men. Because you have overcome the evil one. Who are the young men? People like me, people like you, you know, people um, still growing in their faith. And how? How do we overcome the evil one? He goes on to say right here in verse 14, pay attention. Pay attention to how the grammar switches, right? Now he says this, I write to you. I write to you. Okay. In the original language, this is something that I dug up and, and found out for myself, right? So I encourage everyone to uh, do a little research. But in the original language, in the original grammar, here in this line, he says, I write to you. It means it's the perfect tense, meaning it's already been completed. Like how Jesus says, it is finished. The finished there, is it's already done. It's complete. We don't have to do anything to add to the cross, right? It's it is finished, but the, there's a ripple effect, right? It, it, there there's still things going today. People are still believing 
in, in the work of the cross. And what's happening, we're getting set apart. We're getting sanctified by the word. We grow in our faith, right? We become children. We become fathers, right? And then young men. So you see how he writes in the order here. Children, fathers, and young men. The Bible is very specific in its wording, man. Pay attention. Take heed. Right? And then he says this. I write to you, dear children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong. Right? Strong in the faith. Stand firm. My battery's about to die. So we're about to wrap it up. And then he says this. I write to you, right, young man? I write to you, okay. I write to you, young man, because you are strong. And the word of God lives in you. And you have overcome the evil one. So, dear children, fathers, and young men, we all overcome the evil one by the word of God. So stay strong, man. Be on the alert. Guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And then he goes on to talk about don't love the world, right? But I encourage everyone, man, to 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 further your uh, your digging and your research in Scripture. And how can we not just read it for information, read it for revelation, right? As uh, one of my spiritual leaders will say. And not just that, but apply it. Don't be a hearer, but be a doer. So that's it, man. Again, uh, click the link in the description below. That will take you to a testimony of the brother Jacob. All about spiritual growth, man. So uh, stay tuned.